the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is known as pollination. Now pollination is not enough for reproduction of a new plant. It has to be followed by a process in which there is fusion of pollen grains with the ovule. And this process is known as fertilization. So pollination followed by fertilization brings about reproduction in a plant. Now pollination ensures that the pollen grains fall on the stigma of the carpel. Now how does these pollen grains journey into the ovary that contains the ovule? Let us see. We've previously studied the structure of a pollen grain. The pollen grain has an outer exine and an internal intime. Now after pollination, that is after this pollen grain reaches the stigma, what happens is the inner intime bulges out, it breaks open the outer exine and it forms a tube-like structure like this inside the style of the carpel. Now we also had talked about two nucleus that were present in the pollen grain, the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus. Now the tube nucleus leads this tube formation towards the ovule and hence it is known as the tube nucleus. Another function of the tube nucleus is that it gives direction to the generative nucleus. This is the tube nucleus and this is the generative nucleus. So it gives direction to the generative nucleus towards the ovule. So what is so special about the ovule? In this picture, can you identify the ovule? Yes, this part is the ovule. And the ovule contains the egg cell. See this white spherical structure? This is the egg cell. Now fusion of this egg cell with a generative nucleus forms a new plant life. Now the ovule is connected to the ovary by this pipe-like structure which is known as the funiculus. Now the tube formation of the pollen grain reaches the ovule near the funiculus and enters into the ovule through a pore-like structure which is known as the micropyle. So micropyle, which is this opening, allows the entry of the tube this pollen tube into the ovule. Now you might have also noticed that there are two adjacent cells beside the egg cell. Now these two cells, they work together and help in the fusion of a generative nucleus to the egg cell. So these two cells work together and they are known as synergid. Synergid means to work together. And these three cells that are present on the opposite side of this opening 
is known as the antipodal cells. Antipodal means opposite side. Antipodal cells have no role in fertilization. This is a flower and this is the ovary which contains the ovule. Now after fertilization, this ovary converts into the fruit and the ovule inside the ovary turns into the seed of a fruit. This is a pea flower, this is the ovary and these are the ovules inside. So after fertilization, this becomes the fruit, the ovary, this was the ovary in the flower which forms the fruit after fertilization and the ovules that were present inside the ovary they turn into the seed. So this is a converted ovule. So hence it is proved that after fertilization, ovule converts into a seed and the ovary converts into the fruit. Now, a seed may be stored for many years before being planted. Like all living beings that need food to survive, even seed needs food to survive. So what provides the seed with food? Well, before fertilization, all the nourishment that the cells of the ovule requires is provided by this structure that surrounds the ovule and is known as the new cellus. After fertilization, the ovule turns into the seed. So, the seed stores food for itself in the central cell. So after fertilization, the central cell stores the food. Now, what is this cell inside the ovule? Since it is centrally located inside the ovule, it is known as the central cell. Now, the central cell contains two polar nuclei at the center. Now, a generative nucleus fuses with this central cell to form endosperm, which supplies the seed with food. So, how is this possible? We have said that a generative nucleus fuses with the egg cell to form the future plant. Now, just now, I also mentioned that a generative nucleus also fuses with the central cell to form the endosperm that stores the food. How is this possible? Well, let us see. In the tube formed by the pollen grain, the generative nucleus divides to form two male gametes. See, it divides to form two male gametes. Now, one male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form the future plant and another male gamete fuses with the central cell to form the endosperm. And this process is known as double fertilization. One of the male gametes fuses with the egg cell. Now the fusion of this egg cell 
with the male gamete gives rise to embryo this embryo will grow into a new plant in the future another male gamete fuses with the central cell to form the endosperm this endosperm stores food to support the embryo now let us see the entire process of fertilization pollination takes place now we've learned that a pollen grain has an outer exine and an inner intine now what happens after pollination is that the inner intine bulges out breaking the exine and forms a tube like structure in the style of the carpel see the generative nucleus breaks into two male gametes enters through the micropyle the tube nucleus disrupts and one of the male gametes fuses with the egg cell and another one fuses with the central cell this forms the future plant whereas the fusion of the central cell and a male gamete forms the endosperm which stores the food now what about the other parts of the flower well this is the ovary of the flower and these are the ovules now see the other parts disintegrates or degenerates with time and the ovary gets converted to the fruit and the ovules inside forms the seed now what about the green leafy structures that we see on a tomato are they the calyx yes they are the calyx so there are certain fruits in which all the parts of the flowers do not degenerate and an example of such a fruit is a tomato so one generative nucleus divides to form two male gametes now one male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form a zygote and the zygote forms the new plant the second male gamete fuses with the central cell to form the endosperm which stores the food so this process is known as double fertilization now notice there are two polar nuclei inside the central cell so this fusion of a male gamete with two polar nuclei inside the central cell is known as triple fusion so this was double fertilization and this fusion within the central cell is known as triple fusion now while washing rice the dead rice floats on the top why is it so well rice grain contains an embryo within itself which needs nourishment now when the food supply is over the embryo does not get enough food so the embryo dies now since the food stores are over inside the rice grain there is vacuum inside the grain and that causes the rice grain to float on the water so the rice that you see are floating on water is dead rice it has 
a dead embryo and all the food reserves are over.